Number 86. Predict the electron pair geometry and the molecular structure of each of the following. Okay, so we have A through G. We've done, I think, maybe six or seven problems that are just like this. So you guys should get the hang of it. We'll go pretty fast. Um, just know that we need to learn or we have to know how to do the Lewis structures in order to get these problems correct. So if you're if this is your first video for electron pair geometry and, you, and you're not too comfortable with how you draw your Lewis structures, go back to question 40 in this chapter. We do tons of problems starting from there, and I promise you, you will get your Lewis structures down properly. So I'm going to assume that we know them to do these problems. Now, just as a quick refresher, electron geometry, electron pair geometry, I'll just say EPG, is the total number of things around the central atom, all right? So CA. And the things that I'm talking about, I just like to call them things, they're either going to be bonds, so you could have one single bond or one double bond or one triple bond, or lone pairs, so two dots, all right? So two dots represents one thing, and then one single bond would be one thing, one double bond would be one thing, or one triple bond would be one thing. Okay, and just know that those total things will only be found in this column right here, all right? So your electron pair geometry can either be linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramid, or octahedral. But then once you start getting into your molecular structures, you could have those five plus all of these other ones. So that's your molecular structure. And just know that molecular structure, MS, is only focused on your total lone pairs around the central atom. All right, so the first thing, you should always get your electron pair geometry, and then from there you could always find out your molecular structure. Now, Two things that are super important. I just said before that we need to know the Lewis structures. And if your teacher or professor doesn't give you this chart, you're probably going to have to memorize it. All right. So just take a couple of minutes out of your day each day to kind of memorize the, the flow of this. Uh, the names for what they look like. I mean, there's there's pretty much no rhyme or reason. Some of them make sense, but like, you know, seesaw, I don't know, T-shape, you know. So <laughs> just take some time and and and. Just commit it to memory. So let's go. A, we have I, O, F5, and they tell me that iodine is the central atom. So that means iodine in the middle, surrounded by five fluorine. I'll put one, two, three, four, five. And each fluorine has to have three lone pairs around it to get the octet. a little bit. Okay. And then last one. Now we have an oxygen here. So I'm going to put a double bond oxygen and that should have two lone pairs. And if you do the Lewis structure properly, iodine should have no lone pairs if it's done this way. So first things first is we have to find out how many total things, right? We got to do the electron pair geometry. So let's see. Well, I have one bond, two, three, four, five. And now when it comes to a double bond, it's still classified as one double bond. So it's only one. It's not two things. It's one double bond. So if I just count how many, you know, lines I drew with my highlighter, there's a total of six things here. So six things. Now when I say things, those just mean electron pairs. So that's your things here. So six all the way at the bottom would tell me that I have an octahedral electron pair geometry. So my EPG would be uh, octahedral. And now we look at the lone pairs to find out your molecular structure. But for the central atom, there was no lone pairs, right? So zero lone pairs. So in this case, it's six and zero lone pairs, which would be the same exact answer. So in this case, the electron pair geometry and the molecular structure both are octahedral. And A gets checked off. B, P5. 
P-O-C-L-3, and they tell me that phosphorus is the central atom. So phosphorus in the middle, surrounded by three chlorines, one, two, and three. Each chlorine has three lone pairs around it because it needs the octet rule. And then if we drew the Lewis structure properly, this has to have a double bond, and the phosphorus will have no lone pairs, the oxygen has two. And now we are ready. Let's get the total things. Phosphorus is the central atom, and phosphorus has one, two, three single bonds. And then when it comes to the double bond, it's one double bond. So that's four things. And four things for your electron pair geometry, four would be tetrahedral. So this would be tetrahedral. Now we look at the lone pairs, but if I look at the phosphorus, because we always look at the central atom, there are no, no lone pairs, right? There's no dots here. So zero lone pairs. So that means that my molecular structure would be four and zero. It would still be tetrahedral. So in this case, both of them are the same. Molecular structure is the same as the electron pair geometry, and B is done. So if you need to, uh, you know, keep writing, you could pause the video, but I'm just going to erase this because I just need a little bit more room. And then we will do C and D. Okay. So C. Cl2SEO. And they tell me that selenium is the central atom. So selenium in the middle. I'll do the two chlorines. So that's Cl and Cl. Just like before, there's... Uh, three lone pairs around the chlorine to satisfy the octet. There should be a double bond for oxygen. And now we have a lone pair if we do the Lewis structure properly. So let's first find out our electron pair geometry. Total things, we have two bonds, a lone pair, so that's three things, and then one double bond. So that's four lines that I drew. So that's four things. Four things, like we said before, was tetrahedral. So my electron pair geometry would be tetrahedral. Cool. Now let's just figure out what our molecular structure is, and that comes from the lone pairs. Selenium in the middle has only one lone pair. So one lone pair. So the molecular structure would be four and one. So that's trigonal pyramid, or I always call it trigonal pyramidal. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to write trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal. So in this case, the electron pair geometry and the molecular structure are different. And C is done. D, CLSO positive. And they tell me that sulfur is the central atom. So sulfur in the middle, surrounded by one chlorine. Okay, so we got that going on, and now let's see, we have oxygen, and I think we need to give it a triple bond, it's one, two, and then there should be a lone pair here. Okay, so just to make certain that I gave the correct number, I'm just going to calculate the total valence electrons. Sulfur has six, plus oxygen has six, plus chlorine has seven. So we should have a total of 18, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Perfect. Okay, so this should be the Lewis structure. If done properly, box that answer off or bracket it because it's a charge. So now let's look at the total number of things, right? The central atom is sulfur. It has one single bond. That's one. A lone pair, that's two things. And now I have one triple bond. So you count this as only one thing because it's only one triple bond. So in this case, you have three things. So your electron pair geometry would be three is trigonal planar. Okay. And now we look at our lone pairs if there are any. But in the central atom, sulfur had one lone pair. So one lone pair. That means our molecular structure would be three and one. Three and one is bent or angular. I call it bent, but you could use angular. 
and that would be the molecular structure. So it'd be different from electron pair geometry. D is done. I'm going to erase these just so I have a little bit more room. And then we will get to E. F2, S, O, and they tell me that sulfur is the central atom. So sulfur in the middle, surrounded by two fluorines. Each fluorine should have six electrons because it wants to satisfy the octet. Double bond to oxygen. And there's no charge, so this should have a lone pair. And that is good. Okay, so electron pair geometry. Let's look at the central, which is sulfur. It has one bond, another bond, two things, three things, four things, because a double bond only counts once. So that's a total of four things. So electron pair geometry would be tetrahedral, because that's what four is, right? So tetrahedral. And now let's just look at the molecular structure. Well, the sulfur had one lone pair, so one lone pair. That means that the molecular structure would be four and one trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal. Cool. That's E is done. F NO2. Now, we've done this Lewis structure tons of times before in this chapter. NO2 is a nitrogen, is the central atom, surrounded by a double bond of nitrogen on one side, a single bond on the other side. This has three lone pairs, and the nitrogen has one lone pair. And since it has a negative charge, you have to bracket it and say negative one. This is NO2 minus. Nitrogen is the central atom, and how many things does it have? Well, it's got one single bond, a double bond that counts only as one, and a lone pair. So this is a total of three things. So our electron pair geometry would be three trigonal planar. Now let's see what our molecular structure is. Well, it has one lone pair. So one lone pair, our molecular structure would be three and one, which is bent. There you go. It's getting much easier, right? Last but not least is G. I'm just going to erase these. Eee. Too much fun, too much fun with chemistry, right guys? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, okay, so G, silicon, Si, O4, with four minus. Okie dokie. So this one is silicon in the middle, surrounded by four oxygens. They each should have only one bond. One, two, three, four. And they should have three lone pairs um, to satisfy the octet. It has a charge of a negative four, so bracket that off. Negative four. No lone pairs for silicon in the middle. So if we look at silicon, that's the central atom. There's one, two, three, four things here. Four things. So that means that it has an electron pair geometry of four is tetrahedral. And now if we look at the central even more, does it have any lone pairs? No, right? We didn't see any dots. So zero lone pairs. So that means that the molecular structure is also four and zero, which still is tetrahedral. So this one is the same. Electron pair geometry is the same as tetrahedral. G is done. 86 is done. We are done. Whew. What do you think, guys? Easy, easy peasy, or hard, I don't know any word that rhymes with hard, but um, yeah, let me know what you thought in the comments, love to hear from you guys, um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, um, and subscribe to the channel, it'll help us out a lot, thank you so much, I'll see you guys all in the next question, have an awesome day.